We have to cut the head off the enemy. We know that John 10.10 says that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy the enemy. But God has come to give us what? And, And what? More abundantly. Hallelujah. How many of you want life? Oh yeah, I want life. How many of you want abundant life? Okay, come on, I got both hands up. I want abundant life in Jesus' name. I have to have abundant life. I need it in my situation. I I have to be fueled by it. And we know that Jesus says in John 14, 6, that I am the way, the truth, and the... Yeah, we need some life in this season. All I see when I look around is death, destruction, I I, I heard this speaker say the other day, he goes, if it looks like killing, and it looks like stealing, and it looks like destroying, you know it's the enemy. You know, it's pretty straightforward, right? But I I love the way that he said it. It just broke it down. If it looks like killing, check enemy. If it looks like stealing, check enemy. If it looks like destroying, check enemy. You can be sure that's from the enemy, from the evil one. But my friends, God comes to give us life and life more abundantly. How do we fight the darkness? We turn the light on in Jesus' name. We have to turn it on in this season. As we look around at what is happening in the world, no matter what is happening from your eyes, your perspective, your lens, no matter your worldview, no matter your cultural view, no matter your experiential view, no matter what it is that you are facing and what view you are coming from, no matter your political affiliations, no matter any other obstacle or thing you would look at, no matter your sickness or your disease, if you have no kids, if you have many, if you're single, if you're married, if you're young or if you're old, it does not matter, my friends. Jesus is the answer answer for the world today. He still is. He still was 2,000 years ago. He still will always be. He was slain before the foundations of the world. And my friends, he will be there waiting for you at the end to welcome you home and to say, well done, good and faithful servant. But we live in a voice-activated kingdom where we have to to release the light through our mouths. (laughs) Our tongue is like the power switch, you know what I mean? We often forget this, but the Bible says in James 3 that the tongue, you can read about it, James 1, 3 through 1 through 11, it talks about the tongue being a a, a spark that starts a whole forest on fire. That's a pretty pretty powerful statement. It says that the tongue is like that little rudder on the ship that steers the entire giant ship one way or the other, you know? Just that little rudder that's doing all the steering. That is what the tongue is life. It says in uh, the book of Proverbs that, that our tongues bring both life and death. And so if our tongues are the ones that bring it, it is a voice activated situation that we are releasing. If we begin to, to release worry and doubt and oppression and fear and pain and sickness and disease and ill will towards our brothers and sisters in Christ or our enemies. If we are releasing these things, my friend, we are releasing death to them. We're releasing death to our situation. We are releasing death to our families. We are releasing death and bitterness upon our family members in the situations we're speaking into. How many of you want that? Yeah, I don't see any hands up. Anybody? Who wants all that? (laughs) But yet we do it, don't we? Yet we speak ill will to our brother and our sister. We speak ill will to our enemy. We speak suffering over people so often. And we forget that we are actually empowering the enemy and releasing the spider, the scorpion, and the snake upon them when we do it. Those battles so often that many are facing is because of the people that have spoken against their very lives. We have some uh, different people in the Bible um, that I I just want to focus on two stories today. One is a story of David and one is the story of Shammah, one of David's mighty men. David, we know, uh, is an amazing man of God who had a whole lot of problems, but that at the end God called a man after his own heart. He is off in a field, he's raising sheep, tending to the sheep, 
And, um, and, and he is the only person in the Bible that, that I could find or was aware of that cut the head off the enemy. <laughs> so when I had this vision about a month ago, I immediately was drawn to his story. We know here, I'll, I'll flip over, open to Psalm here. I want you guys to see this. Flip to Psalm 139, 5 to 7. It says these words, You go before me and behind me. You laid your hands upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? Now this is a pretty cool story here. God is before me. What's that? If he's before me, that's my, my future. Yeah, come on, you guys are doing good. School's back in session now. I got a, most of us from home, but hey, you know. God is before me. Where? God is behind me. His hand of blessing is upon me. Yeah, present. Come on, somebody. So God is in my future. He's in my past. He's in my present. The writer of this psalm says, such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. Verse 7, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I escape from your presence? It continues on in the heavens or the earth. And, and, and it goes on, this Psalm 139, one of my favorite chapters in the entire Bible. But I think we don't understand this, Arthur, my friend in the back. We don't get this, do we, man? That God is before me. That God is behind me. His hand of blessing is upon me. That in any situation, I can't get away from his spirit or his presence. But we don't act like that, do we? <laughs> Sometimes we look at everything else but what God says. And we're suffering. And we're in hatred and envy and pain towards our neighbors when we're supposed to be loving them. When we're supposed to be serving the Lord with all our heart, uh, mind, soul, and strength, with all of our love, guys. We forget so often that God is for us. I remember when I got the revelation of this verse, I went into my mom's room, who's here today. Love you, mama. Good to see you. Um, she is here today. And I remember when I got the revelation of this, I went to her. I'm like, Mom, you're never going to believe this verse I just read. Oh, my goodness. You're getting, you got to read this. And she's like, okay, I'm working. I got like 30 seconds. Just say it real quick. <laughs> I said, Mom, God is before me. God is behind me. His hand of blessing is on me. That's past, present, and future. Is there anything left? No. <laughs> I can't get away from his spirit, and I can't get away from his presence. It's, it's almost like I can't lose or something. <laughs> She's like, yeah. She's like, read it again. I'm like, God's before me. God's behind me. Hand the blessing on me. I can't get away from his spirit or his presence. She's like, that's pretty good. It's almost, it's almost like it's like rigged in your favor or something. I'm like, Mom, you are amazing. Like, that's amazing. My mind just got blown. Like, bam. I'm like, it's rigged in my favor. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I can't lose and it's rigged in my favor. And I can't get away from God's spirit. And where God's spirit is, the Bible says there is fullness of joy, and at his right hand are pleasures evermore. Where his spirit is, is all the fruits, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. It's all there. I got all that too. Like, I am literally covered head to toe in everything I could ever want. I'm full of faith, full of hope, full of love, and all I got to do is just stay in his presence. And I can't leave it. This is beautiful. I can't lose. It's rigged in my favor. Let's go change the world! <laughs> it was that kind of a moment for me, guys. I can tell it is for you to do today, so, you know. And this is why, this is why in verse 6 it says these words. The writer says, Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. And uh, one version says, It's too lofty for me 
than to do it, understand. And you know why they say that? Because of the look you guys all got on your faces right now. Because you don't, still don't get it. <laughs> you know who the writer of this thing was? It was David. David was out in the fields, in the pastures, when the moment of his lion came, the moment his bear came, the moment he was not invited to his own ceremony to be anointed by God, to be anointed as the king. He wasn't even invited to his own ceremony. He was the youngest of all of the brothers. David goes, he sees Goliath on a battlefield, and he said, you've come to defy the armies of the living God today. And he said, today, God will stand against you, and I'm going to be his vessel. And my friends, that day he slayed the giant in Jesus' name. And this is what it says in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 50 to 51. It says these words, So David triumphed over the Philistines with a sling and a stone. Without a sword in his hand, he struck down the Philistine who killed him. Goliath's ten feet tall, and he slayed him without a sword. With a slingshot. Are you kidding me? You can't make this up. David ran over him after he killed him and stood over him. He took the Philistine's own sword, drew it from the scabbard, and after that he killed him and cut off his head with that sword. This is like epic. <laughs> this is like better than Lord of the Rings. Okay, guys. He literally takes the giant's own sword and cuts the head off the enemy. Can I tell you where all of his friends were? They were scared. They were in fear. They were running for their lives. He ran his mouth for, for weeks, Goliath, for weeks saying, send some dog to fight me. Send somebody to fight me. Oh, you're all chickens. But it took one boy with a slingshot, with a word from the Lord in a dream, to stand against that man. And my friends, that day, Israel took the land and they drove out the Philistines and they cut the head off the enemy. The story continued. David uh, uh, goes into the king's palace. He begins playing music for the, for the king. And, and Saul comes and he... He chases him out and tries to kill him while he's playing worship music because Saul was tormented by the demons. He kept giving in to them. His, uh, God had lifted his favor off of Saul in that season. Then Saul chases David around the countryside, trying to kill him, slay him, drive him down, beat him. Is anybody else having a bad day? He drives him into a cave and then cuts off the edge of King Saul's cloak when he didn't see him. And this is the kind of man David was. He lifts up that, that cloth and he says, far be it from me to touch the Lord's anointed. He's trying to kill him. How about he slays him and gets the victory? Hallelujah, thank you God. Nope, not David. He said, I'm not gonna touch the Lord's anointed. He, he may not have God's favor right now, but the Lord still anointed him. And far be it from me to speak against him. This guy, he goes, becomes a king, starts winning all these victories all around, and one day takes the day off, takes a woman that was another man's wife, sleeps with her, and then sends that man, the, 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 the wife's husband, to go to the field to die. Murders him, sends a note, kill him on the front lines. Then he repents before God for his nation. And then he starts doing great again. And then his son raises up against him and uh, runs an insurgency to come against him. And like, this is David's life. <laughs> it's all over the place. He, he dreams up. He has 24-7 prayer going in the temple before International House of Prayer ever started. David was running the first International House of Prayer in Israel, doing all this crazy stuff. I mean, this is King David, guys. And this guy, Pastor Denise, this guy says, God is before me. God is behind me. His hand of blessing is upon me. It's too wonderful for me to understand. Do you get it yet? This is what this guy is saying. I don't care what you're going through today. I don't care what pain has reared its ugly head at you today. 
I love you and I care about you, but my friends, the Spirit of God is rising up within people. And if you can be trusted with the little in this season, in the middle of everything that's going on, you can be trusted with a lot. The Lord is looking for people to raise up from the altars of intimacy to the, to the warriors of this generation and to take the word of the Lord forward. We have to get in God's presence and not leave it and not run from it and not stray from it and speak the words of life over our generation. The enemy has come to destroy us. He's come to steal from us. He has come to reign over us. But my friends, just like I saw in that vision, when we see it from God's perspective, he's just a tiny little worm to be stepped on if we will just let God uh, carry out his work in our lives in Jesus' name.